Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Our Community, the last episode of 2020. It has been one heck of a year, and uh, I think I would, couldn't think of a better way to end off this year than to have uh, my guest with me today, Carolyn Parsons, um, not only known for the university, but also known as the mayor's wife. Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Um, I just want to let the people in, in the community know a little bit about uh, who you are as uh, as an individual. I mean, you growing up, what life was like and things like that. So tell me, I mean, you grew up in Cornerbrook? Yes, yeah. I grew up in Cornerbrook on Loman Street. That was Carolyn Chalk. Right. I grew up here and I actually went to university uh, at Grenfell for a couple of years and then moved to St. John's where I finished my degree. In, in what your degree? Uh, I did a Bachelor of Business Administration, okay. and later on I, I went on and did a Master's in Education. Wonderful, and that led you to being up at the university, I guess, then? Yes, uh, that's actually a bit of, that's how we ended up back here. Right. Um, when I was a student at Grenfell, uh, I worked in the registrar's office, which is actually the office where I work out of now. Mm -hmm. um, I had a part-time student job and I worked uh, closely with a couple of people, but uh, Nikki Carlson and Sharon Knopfler Bennett. And uh, Nikki's job at that time, she was a high school liaison officer. And oh. she used to go around to high schools and telling people about Grenfell. And I remember always thinking like, what an awesome job. <laughs> And so when I moved to St. John's, um, one of my first jobs, I was working in human resources with the healthcare corporation out there. And I remember I used to always tell people my dream job was to work at Grenfell. Um, and somebody I worked with out there said, oh, you should do your master's in education. That would, you know, really help mm -hmm. you prepare for working at the university. Anyway, one, uh, one Christmas, uh, Jim and I came home for Christmas and I was just looking through the Western Star, waiting for someone, you know, and uh, I saw a job posted, a student recruitment officer, the title had changed. Uh -huh. And I said to Jim, I said, my dream job is in the paper. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Right. And um, so I decided to apply and then we left St. John's, left permanent jobs out there and moved back to Cornerbrook. Oh, wow. And anyway, I, I keep saying we just moved back to Cornerbrook, but it's been uh, 17 years, so right. I don't think I can say that anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, so that obviously is an exciting job, I can only imagine, um, and, uh, and a fun job. But I'm just kind of curious then, I guess, you know, growing up, you know, in Loman, um, a lot of kids growing up in that area? I don't know, were, th were there many? And just to create, like Loman Street, not yes. Loman does it, yeah, I think yes, you knew yes, that, yes, but yes, just, yes. just to make sure. Uh, yeah, there was always lots of kids in, yeah. in that area, you know, and it was a, it's a quiet street, so is, you could yes. play out in the road and, and play hopscotch. So there's a lot of kids there now. Probably not. I, no. I don't live there anymore, but I do, I do know some people uh, yeah. that, that still live there, but... Yeah, it's probably a bit well, it, it is kind of the same thing where I grew up on Humber Road. It was kids everywhere, and, and now, I mean, now they're probably still there, but they're inside playing under games or, or yeah. something like that. So what, what were the kind of things that you did growing up on, on Loman Street and, and, in, and in the city? Oh, well, back, back then, yeah, it was <laughs> a, a lot of playing outside and, yeah. you know, hopscotch on the, on the street and um, what was it used to call it, you know, TV tag or anyway, right. I, I hardly remember, but... Yeah. Um, and I used to take uh, music lessons from uh, Wayne Rogers, who actually also lived on Loman Street. So, yeah. you know, I could easily just walk down to my music lessons. So Wonderful. It was great fun. Um, and, of course, your husband, when he was on, mentioned that he's also involved in a bit of music. So is that something you two kind of connected on with? Or? Well, yes, I guess we both took uh, music lessons from Mr. Rogers. So right. that was a common thread there. I think we probably first met when we were in junior high. We were doing... Um, a, uh, a musical. He, Jim was a grade ahead of me and I mm -hmm. um, forget what the musical was that we first met in, Coming of Age or Monster. I, I was, it was some junior high musical and we were both involved and that's where we met and the rest is history. You know, we right, didn't right. start dating right away or anything a few <laughs> years later, but that's when we first met. Yeah. Uh, that would have been one met. heck of a long relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it was long to begin with. We did start dating yes. in high school. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so, you know, you went through school here, but you got, ended up going away for school. So uh, what happened there? What, what, you obviously went to finish your, your degree. Did you, did you stay afterward or? So at that time, I, I, 
I loved Grenville. I loved the small campus. I would have stayed there for, um, for my full degree if I could, but at that time you couldn't do a business degree at, at Grenville. So right. um, I sort of changed my mind a few times. You know, I'd been considering social work, education, and then I landed on business. Um, so I had to go to the St. John's campus to finish my degree. And so after I graduated, I, I enjoyed St. John's. Um, my first job was actually with uh, human resources with Provincial Airlines. Oh. Um, and then I was just with them for a few months. It was a very small HR department and I was brand new. And then uh, a job came open, as I mentioned before, with the healthcare corporation. So I was actually recruiting um, nurses to work in the hospitals in St. John's. Wow. At that time, it was called the Healthcare Corporation of St. John's, right. now Eastern Health. Um, so I worked with them for probably three years, I think, before I ended up moving back home. So I was actually only in St. John's for, I don't know, five, six years, okay. I think. And I mean, I, I know from my experience leaving Corner Brook, um, it's not easy, is it, being away from home? Like, did, you, did you feel work aside that pull back to Corner Brook during that period of time? You just wanted to get back home? or? Yeah, I, I'm hesitating now. I, I mean, obviously, I was yeah. um, happy to come back to Quarterbrook, but I actually was really enjoying St. John's as well. Um, right. So I have nothing to neg negative to say about that experience, except maybe the weather. We right. we definitely <laughs> uh, missed the West Coast weather. Yeah. Um, but for me, it really was the the job at Grenfell, and then we did we had been sort of looking at opportunities to to get back to the West Coast. Um, so we sort of said. Let's go for it. When we moved back, um, you know, everyone was like, oh, you'll have an easy time moving back. You know, you're from there. You'll have lots of friends. But we didn't. We didn't no. really know anybody our age anymore. Um, and so it, it did take us a little bit of time to sort of get back into the community and get involved. Um, and first, with my job, I, I've changed jobs since in the university, but as a recruiter, I was traveling a lot. So it was really hard to get involved. So what mm. started happening, Jim got very involved in um, in theater and, and I felt sort of like the yeah. mystery wife who used to appear randomly, you know, <laughs> but, but wasn't really um, around that much. Right. But uh, anyway, a couple years in, my, my schedule changed. I wasn't traveling as much and, and uh, so I was able to get a bit more involved and met more people and um, so in addition to sort of community theater, I also met some people who really enjoyed singing. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with acapella. It's a I group of, yeah. of uh, gals who uh, sing acapella music. So we're, uh, you know, we're close friends and, and we all enjoy singing. So that's really been a big part of my life moving back and, and a strong social network too. So. Right, so I mean that is actually I, I've seen some of the videos on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, sorry, Facebook, and uh, it's been fantastic. So, uh, tell me a little bit about the acapellas. How did how did that really form? Obviously, you, you mentioned you know a few friends, and and what kind of stuff have you done, and any any plans for more things in the future? So, when did I think acapella first formed? Probably back in two thousand and four or five. They they got together just before, there was a group together mm -hmm. before me. Um, I was sort of one of the slate late comers. Right. Um, my understanding is that the idea was born, and there was a number of people who were um, at a drama festival, like a provincial drama festival. They were all in a show together. And I think they might have been in Grand Falls or somewhere, and there was an a cappella group or some group singing, doing some entertainment. They were like, we could do that. Like, that looks like fun. We should get something on the go. Um, so I, that's sort of where the idea started. Um, and then in 2005, I was in TNL's production of community theater production of Annie. Oh, wow. And um, that's where I got to know Darlene Steves, who sort of uh, was part of Acapella, and we did a bit of singing together in Annie. So she was sort of like, hey, come, uh, come join us. So, right. so that was, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty quiet this year in terms of acapella. Uh, we weren't really rehearsing much since March, but just got back together, even just singing together. We were not really performing a whole lot, but, um, you know, we do, we like to do usually a concert a year. We did put out a CD a few years ago, but that's really old now, but it was a <laughs> Christmas CD. Yeah. 
And at Christmas time, we usually really enjoy um, going around to like long-term care, seeing at the hospital, um, right. you know, those sorts of things as well. But even that's not possible this year either. Which maybe, maybe we can see a nice, uh, you know, Facebook live stream of mm, you gals singing some Never Christmas know. music. I think it'd be fantastic. Yeah. Involved in the arts. Now, one of the things that I, I find when I talk to people about Western Newfoundland, and, and I think Newfoundland in general, but uh, really Western Newfoundland, really is the uh, amount of talent that we have for the arts. Um, what has it been like for you, you know, in being involved with the arts and seeing that kind of a talent? And, and, and how has that kind of, um, you know, helped you, I guess, in terms of your uh, acceptance, understanding, or, or even just belonging with the community and, and growing and things like that? What's it been like for you? Because I, I think a lot of people who are gifted in the arts, some, not a lot, maybe, but some certainly struggle with feeling like a part of our community. And, and, and I think there's a way that they can. What has it been like for you? Uh, well, I think, uh, I sort of feel like that is our community. I mean, that right. is, um, I mean, growing up, I was very involved in, in music, not only, you know, I used to take lessons from Mr. Rogers, but also in terms of choirs and that sort of thing. I wasn't as involved in theater a, as a kid, but, um, you know, again, as an adult, for me, that was how I became part of even the greater community. That's how I met people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the arts are important to communities for a number of reasons, but even that social connection and social network for the people involved in the arts is important. Not only, like, that's an addition to what they bring to others in the community through the art form, but even just their connection with others. It's like, you know, it's, it's your social network and support within the community. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious to know that because you did say that your job from being the recruiter changed at Munn. Are you more involved with the art side at Munn now at all? Or is it no. non-job related <laughs> involved? Or? Um, yeah, no. I, from a professional standpoint, I'm not involved in the arts. So okay. um, uh, obviously Grenfell is also big in the arts. We have fine arts. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my role at Grenfell is very, very much administrative in, right. in nature. Um, I'm the campus registrar and director of student services. Right. Um, so I, I work closely with students, but I'm not uh, I'm not on the academic side of the arts by any means. I'm, I'm not I'm not that uh, I'm not that talented. <laughs> I, I've I seen some it. stuff. Listen, I would listen, beg to differ. I, <laughs> I, I very much enjoy it, but it's yeah. it's not my uh, right. I'm not a professional. Right, right. Yeah. But there are there are a lot of programs. Um, around here for, for people who are interested in the arts. Mm -hmm. Of course, with you know with youth, we've got even the Graham Academy, we've got uh, TNL, there's uh, Dance Studio West for, for dancing, there's a lot of programs. But I, I don't know, I don't see a whole lot for adults. I don't, I know that there are some involvement to these things and, and maybe I'm not seeing a whole lot for adults because not a whole lot of adults are getting involved in these things. But what, what, do, you, what do you see that's well, a little? Well, I'm gonna tell you something now. Yeah? I didn't dance as a, I don't dance now, and I'm not a dancer. Okay, right. just to be very clear. <laughs> um, but as an adult, I was like, oh man, I wish I could dance. I, I wish I had done dance as a kid. And when I was 30, I know I, it looks like I'm still not even 30, but um, never would have when I turned 30, I actually started taking dance lessons at Dance yeah. Studio West. And there was a I wasn't in a group with 10 year olds. You know, there there are adult groups. Right. So um, some people may not realize that, but there was a group of adults. It was a lot of fun. We were all like, first it was jazz, and then it was like learning ballet, and you know, at 30 years old in your little pink tights, it was really <laughs> fun. And then we were at the in the end of year show. So. Right, right. <laughs> um, but also from a community theater perspective, I'm not as involved now, mainly because uh, I'm busy with the kids and some other things. So my Priorities have shifted a little bit temporarily anyway, um, but like the off-Broadway players, that's all adults. I mean, you have to be mm -hmm. 19 or, or older to um, participate in, in the off-Broadway players. Right. Um, you know, they're the things that I've been involved with, but I, I do think there are other um, arts communities that adults can, can get involved with for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I, I mean, maybe I can rephrase what I was saying. So there are, but I think that um, what I've noticed is it's it's almost a smaller group of people of adults versus when you see the youth it's groups sure, are yeah. much much bigger, right? Yeah. Um, 
But uh, you know, having been back, you said what seventeen years you've been yeah, you've been back now. Yeah. yeah. So so what is what do you think has changed for you? I mean, you know, seventeen years back home in Cornerbrook, and not a lot of people can say that they've moved away, worked, come back, and been here back you know that long. A lot of people end up leaving again or don't come back. So how has life been like for you? Obviously, working at university kept you here. Uh, any other things going on that's kind of said you know this is home we're staying. Oh, I uh, I. I love Cornerbrook, um, and even as a kid I did, I mean, a lot of my friends growing up, you know, you always had some friends who were like, oh, I can't wait to move away, get away, I want a bigger center. Now, some of those people now have changed their tune and mm -hmm. have moved back and they love it. I always loved Cornerbrook. Again, I still, I loved my other experience as well, but um, in terms of, I mean, really, uh, I talked with the arts, but also, um, I don't know, Cornerbrook has a bit of everything. Like, I'm not a downhill skier, but I really right. enjoy, you know, snowshoeing and cross-country skiing, and everything is so close. It's just minutes away. You're not out in traffic for uh, long, extended periods of time. We have enough, uh, you know, restaurants and the latest additions of some, um, you know, breweries. And mm. I, th I think that sort of thing is growing as well. So I think there's the right combination. You know, it's a safe place, lots to do outdoors, but there's also, um, and for, for what I'm looking for, a strong enough social um, experience it, right. as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's true. So, so what do you think then is one of your favorite things to do? I mean, you're a mom, yeah. obviously, and you're, you're a wife, so there's, there's family things, and, and I'd love to touch on that a little bit. But um, personally, what do, you, what do you really enjoy doing yourself in town? Oh, What's some of your favorite easy. things? Well, I always like going out to get food, uh, you know, and it's not always like Jim is actually an awesome um, cook so I, I get good food all the time but you know right. just going out and, and seeing people and um, at a restaurant you know on a Friday after work going down to best coast restaurant on West Street for a few nibblies or something like that is always mm -hmm. fun um, the last few years I I got back into cross-country skiing actually when I was on mat leave with uh, with Rosie hmm. for she was born in February so I didn't start skiing right away but you know for the over the summer, I was walking a lot and mm -hmm. getting outside, and I was like, I'm going to go crazy if I'm going to be inside all the time during the winter. So got some skis and a pass and a, you know, trailer for, for, for Rosie, and yeah. uh, we did a lot of cross-country skiing. And there's a nice vibe up there, you know, again, you know, the lodge and then lots of families. And um, so I really, I really enjoy that scene as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and and of course being a mom. I mean, I'm a father. I have four kids. Um, what I've enjoyed um, before kids, and what I enjoy with my kids now, there's a lot of overlapping. Just getting them involved and doing what I was doing and things like that. So you do have kids. You have two. Yes. Yes. So what what's been like? Cause they're not they're not 17 or older. So they're you know after you move here, you settle down here, uh, you eventually have children. What's life been like for you as a mom here? Well, you know, there's lots of challenges uh, yeah. being a mom, but no good. Um, they both take uh, piano lessons um, here, so that's fun. And, and uh, the last few years now, we've gotten them involved in cross-country skiing. I feel like yes. I force that on them a little bit because I'm <laughs> like, you are going to ski because we can do this as a, a family. So yeah. Um, yeah. Jim actually just got some skis. I think last winter was his first year I think or second year so that was really fun that you know the four of us now can go in and ski lots of the trails in yeah. there and of course you know the kids they're a pain in the butt sometimes but they're lots of fun um, you know it's mm -hmm. it's never quiet in our house it's never tidy no. <laughs> um, there's there's always uh, I have to say that when you see a messy home when there's children you know there's happiness there as well <laughs> well there's so. lots of happiness <laughs> in my home yeah yeah <laughs> Um, you know, so, so how old is your oldest? Uh, seven. She'll seven. be eight in February. Wow. Yeah. So, so I guess now what are we looking at? Three years since your husband's been mayor. Yeah. And so for much of her life and, and her younger sibling's life, dad's been mayor. So how's that been like in, at home with dad obviously busy and, and doing his work and, 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 you know, things happening that, uh, of course, when you're in the limelight, things, you know, are said and done. Uh, how's that impacted, uh, you know, the kids, I guess, as 
seeing dad and, and knowing who dad is? Because it's a big deal to have dad as a mayor. They're pretty proud. Yeah. Uh, they're at the age where they're just super proud. Right. Um, I don't think they fully understand. Like, I think at one point, this like probably a couple years ago, I think they thought like he had a key to like every building <laughs> in Cornerbrook, and yeah. we're like, mm, not quite. <laughs> that's not quite how it works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just you know they don't fully understand it. You know, they want to sure. be mayor when they get older, um, and uh, so so they're proud. I mean. They're also at the age where, you know, they're not on social media. They're not really paying too much attention to the news. Mm -hmm. They might say, oh, look, that's dad or is that dad on the radio? But they're not, you know, Listening. paying attention yeah. to, uh, you know, if anyone's saying something negative or, or bad about it. They're not to that age where they they sure. pick up on, on that. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, I guess... Well, so yeah, so three years... Yeah, they were, they were pretty young, so they probably don't remember... You know, a, a different... A different dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a different lifestyle. And Jim is really good at yeah. um, separating, too. Like, um, he, yeah, he's just good at separating. So they don't yeah. see him home all, you know, stressed out or anything like that. They might see him have to take some calls sometimes or dad's on the phone again or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Jim isn't a high-stress kind of person who shares that so that's no of course that's good. in fact I, I think that the last time I saw uh, Jim with, uh, with the two of them was at, uh, at Fox's and curling having an ice cream yeah, yeah and it was it was so nice to see because it's nice to see that you know the family side behind the, the, the public figure side yeah. Um, yeah that's great and so what about you know life in general how's how's everything been since you know uh, obviously the big change moving home you know the job and everything like that but then all of a sudden your husband says I want to be mayor Yes. And, and life changes. What's it been like for you um, during that course of time? Well, I don't really remember the moment where, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I got, I got, there's something I want to talk to you about. I think, I think it was just a, I don't know, I guess it used to just come up in different settings, and I was always sort of like inside thinking, is he serious about this? Is he serious about this? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, finally we had a conversation about it. It is not my, um, <laughs> uh, I would never in a million years choose a life of politics or um, being in the you know, public eye, uh, but obviously that's me and that would be s very selfish to be like, you can't do right. this. Yeah. Um, I was incredibly um, nervous, a little uncomfortable, a little stressed prior, you know, especially during the election, and I don't handle, you know, negativity or controversy that that well. So right. I was I was really um, a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised. Right. There have been moments where, you know, yes, I feel some stress, but it actually. For the most part, people are incredibly respectful, um, polite. You know, we we often are in the grocery store together, and um, yes, he might get stopped and someone have a chat with him, but it's not. You know, people aren't calling, yelling, or mm -hmm. it's it's been a very positive experience from that perspective, what? like from the public perspective. You know, yes, sometimes there's you know, some things that have surprised me or that have disappointed me in terms of, you know, how things work or mm -hmm. the political side of things. But overall, from a community perspective, um, it's been positive. You know, I think that's actually a, a bit of a testament to our community. It really is. I, I've gotten to know Jim well enough to know that he can, like you said, he can take these negativities and these stuff. But I, I look at it and I say, but he has a family. And, and I think a lot of people can be forgetful of the fact that, sure, he's a mayor, but the mayor has a family. And so when you, if you say something, how is that going to pour over to the family, and, and do you consider that, and so on. Um, but, uh, you know, having that said, it, it seems like, you know, you're, you're, you're handling it well yourself. You're a bit stressed in it a little bit, or a little bit of... <laughs> yeah, and we are but. so, we are completely different. We are very, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a lot of ways, and... Um, and maybe it's more to do when it's with the other 
person, you know, but uh, like, like I said, Jim is very good at not taking things um, personally. Like he can separate like, okay, somebody has an issue with, you know, whatever it may be, the roads or with, you know, um, they're not happy with this situation, but he doesn't take that as like, this is a personal attack on right. me. It's like, you know, they have an issue. We need to try to solve it. And he can separate that. Um, and yeah, he, I, I'm incredibly biased, obviously, but I, I, I always say like, he is the right person for that kind of position because he can separate, right. you know, he doesn't take it all to heart. Um, but I have trained myself to, okay, maybe try to stay away from social media because on his behalf, I'm like, I can't believe someone said that. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't bother him, but it does, um, and, and you know, I think, I think he mentioned that when he was on the show and he, he talked a little bit about that and we didn't, we didn't get too much into it, but I'm kind of curious because he, he didn't, he also didn't open up as to whether or not he would consider running again, but you know, uh, albeit regardless of the results, you, you see yourself sticking around here for the future. That's, this is it. This is home. In Kids Park? are growing up here. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I can't imagine being anywhere else. Obviously situations change all the mm -hmm. time and you know, we would deal with whatever we had to deal with, but uh, we both love it here right. and I don't see I'm quite happy <laughs> and I'm glad to hear that I feel yeah. the same way um, I want to thank you so much for being on today and uh, for all of you watching this is the last episode of the year so uh, we won't see you again until 2021 where we'll get to reflect on what has been 2020 so thank you again so much for joining me here thank and you. for all of you been watching we'll see you again next time until then bye for now